this week, Drew, Nelson, and Rick, and I get to welcome Kevin, president and owner of the Vintage Rockefeller Cigar Group. Kevin is a adventurer by nature, for sure. He's traveled many countries, dangerous and high risk, in search of precious international and gold and silver. He has experience in that. We're definitely going to spend some time talking a little bit about the market as well and some business. Uh, I can't wait. I might adjust my portfolio right here in front of all you Stogie Geeks. Who knows? <laughs> Kevin Kevin is a cigar, has been a cigar enthusiast for over 26 years, and now, as the owner, he's guiding the Rockefeller Cigar Company and its solid history to a new era of success. In the second segment, Nelson has some news we're going to talk about and the sticks of the week. Stogie Geeks, strap on your seatbelts. Here we go. Episode 344 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have Remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stoy Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm all set up for the uh, Stoke Geek uh, mobile lounge. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the big show. I am your host, Joe Hosepa. It is a privilege and an honor to be here for Stogie Geeks episode 3. 44 we have a cast of characters today and you might want to grab a pencil when kevin talks because you can rebalance your portfolio potentially for sure never a dull conversation uh conversation when kevin is here but first i must introduce you if he's ready and understands if his computer on is on and the microphone is on <laughs> drew the little dark haired kid from texas do you know how to use a computer I do. Yes. I just Whoa. Ah. I just don't think. Drew. Does it work? It yeah. works. It works. It works. You're on, Drew. My only comment is that you were doing so good for a year. And ever since your yeah. year anniversary, man, you've been, you, 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 oh. your grades are going down, man. You got to keep your foot on the gas. I'm just saying. I'm telling you, man. Right. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I, yeah, I moved in. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working, you know, I'm, I'm coming to you from my bunker at my day job and, uh, you know, it's weird. I don't know what's going on. It's like I had it working earlier. I mean, I was ready at 1045. Good answer. Um, and I thought <laughs> I'd run through everything. And then all of a sudden, things just went to, you know, hell. So I think it's because the cold temperatures over here. We're at 73 degrees, which we're not used to at this time, though we should be with the rest of the country. But we're not. <laughs> I'm sure you'll so, be fine. And so to- I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to speak to Drew's Kevin. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's get to Kevin. But we have a couple more intros I to actually you. do. Right. Uh, we have Nelson, who's uh, starting to become a fixture here. That's right. Nelson. So Fixtures are good. They can out, be broken. They can work. Check out his reviews on stogiegeeks.com and uh, click on the stogie section. Nelson's going to write at least two more reviews this week. Homework. There you go. Cool. Excited about that. Absolutely. I'm excited. Shoot cool. me some comments. What else you want to hear? Yes. And then we have po- possibly one of the most famous people to live in the town of Middletown, Rhode Island. <laughs> A Red Sox fan and an all-around good guy, and it is a privilege and honor to call this gentleman my friend, and it took him at least eight months to get here and sit in studio. <laughs> True story, right? So we have Rick Lombardi. How are you? Uh, great, Joe, and it's my pleasure to be here with you and Nelson and all your great guests. 
and uh, with all these great uh, cigar connoisseurs. Well, you know, we're going to be asking your opinions on some stuff. Feel free, if you have a question, chime in. Um, and welcome to Stogie Geeks. My pleasure. It's going to be fun. And now I get to introduce to you a gentleman. The last time he was on Stogie Geeks, I wasn't a father yet, so it's been over two years ago. And it is Kevin, owner of Rockefeller Cigars. Kevin, welcome back to Stogie Geeks. Hey, guy. Good to see you, brother. How, how is, and, uh, how's everything going? Father and, uh, your kid looks great. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. You were on episode 280 something, either two or four off the top of my yep. head. Uh, for you, Stogie Geeks. Yep. 284. So, um, yeah. So if you want to catch uh, Kevin's interview, go to stogiegeeks.com, his first interview, and you can type in episode 284 and you can catch that uh, there. Uh, I love second interviews. Right, because second interviews for 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 us here, format wise, is we get to kind of do like a deep dive, right? And I actually get to do less talking and more smoking, right? And it's <laughs> it, you know it's 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 really cool. But um, give us an update as to uh, Rockefeller over the past two years. You know uh, how things are going. Um, if you want to talk about COVID, we we can. Uh, I don't you know I don't want to. You know, shine a, a, a light on more darkness. I think the media does that well enough there, um, and and kind of let us know like like how it was from from your transition over the past two years. Because I believe in our last interview, um, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, you 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 were starting this venture as the sole owner of of Rockefeller Cigars. So take us through that. So yeah, so to, when I was on your show last time, which was about, I guess, two years ago, I was like a year into owning the company mm -hmm. and a lot of things needed to be fixed. We wanted to decide what markets we were going after and we did. And the company since then has been doing phenomenal. Um, at the time we were dotting our I's, crossing our T's, keeping grounded, staying exactly where we need to be. But now, now we're in six markets in the United States and we're growing. We're growing in social media, we're growing the amount of consumers that we want to put Rockefeller hands into. And since then, we've come out with a lot of different blends and we're working on even more blends. I think back when I was talking to you, we had the Nicaraguan blends out of American Caribbean and we didn't do anything with the Dominican factory. Correct. Since then, we started working with Victor de la Cruz, where original cigars were made before I bought the company. And we've come out with some great stuff. And the one I'm about to smoke, actually, if you guys can see it, is a Dominican blue. Mm hmm. It's a beautiful Habano Maduro hybrid wrapper, Sumatra binder, and it's got Connecticut broadleaf running through it with the other Dominican fillers. Yeah. Excellent to smoke, excellent to smoke in the morning. And Victor de la Cruz is a true gentleman and his son Hardy, where these cigars are made at Tobacco Lara L and V. And we came on, I think it was IPCPR 2018 when we first introduced when we first introduced this cigar. Mm -hmm. And since then it's very well for us. We brought it out. We have about 32 different Vitolas out of the Dominican factory that we've had. That factory is predicate. And we brought out um, the short pyramid. It's a beautiful little smoke. It's about a 48, four and a half, four by 48, beautiful stick. And then we came out with the Habano, Habano box press, which is a seven by 48. We also brought back on Maduro. Believe it or not, we were at an event and everyone's like, this, not, this stick is amazing. You guys should have it in your line. And we decided to bring it back. And the way to know the difference of these cigars, first the Dominican blue is blue banded. It's on the foot. The Dominican Maduro is red banded on the foot. And now actually we have a Corojo coming out, which is going to be a gold band on the foot. So that's what we've been up to. And again, we're trying to get reps in almost every market because we want to be completely nationwide. Mm -hmm. I have a goal by 2022 of being completely nationwide. And so far, it looks like we're at target to hit that goal. That's good. That you know, and and you look at that from from a business perspective, and and it, it's it sounds, you know, everything you just said is not an easy accomplishment. Right. Like, uh, you know, or when you're talking to me, to me, in my experience, I'm saying, okay, yep, launching that stick, um, you know, that's six months perfecting the blend, making sure that's done, done the way you're done. You know, it's just six months there. Then you get your distribution. Then you get whoever your reps are now, where they're working, in your current markets that you're in, make, making sure you service them, 
right? That's one thing that I want to make note of is from knowing you a little bit over three, uh, just shy of three years now, um, you know, because I've known you about six months before you came on uh, because of your schedule and ours, it takes, you know, that long for stuff to actually happen, right? Um, you know, and, and, you know, you're servicing where you are, which I think is so important because when, you know, you've taken over a existing brand, a older brand, and now when you take over a existing company, you have to get the image out of the consumer's head of how it's supposed to taste or how it used to taste in there. And then you have to go back and uh, almost reprogram them, right? To say, listen, you know, it, you, it, you, you need to try Rockefeller now under my ownership. And that's what I think that you're doing a fabulous job with of, of just getting, getting the word on the street and then, you know, servicing the current people that you have and it's super important because uh, you know we can go to a roll of decks of people there are a lot of lists where people just say okay i just want to get it in any shop regardless of this and that and then do that there and then they uh, and then they can't uh service them at all so you know hats hats off to you for accomplishing that because i do know um two of the three places that you are locally here in the rhode island and they do very well with 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 rockefeller and to the fact that I mean, I went next door, and by the way, uh, sales lead, call them because they're out. <laughs> Drew, you have a question? Yes. Uh, some of buddies, some buddies of uh, Kevin want to know why he likes Tom Brady so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's Steve from Frontline. He's actually the only guy online that you can get these Dominican blue cigars from as of now. Yeah. And he's in Chicago. Yeah, so I'm not a Tom Brady fan at all. I'm actually an Oakland Raider fan coming out of New York. I know people like, how are you a Raider fan coming out of New York? But let me tell you something, man. When they were the black and silver back in the day, they were unstoppable. And I'm loyal. And I've waited a while, and I think we're getting ready to get there. So <laughs> awesome. I'm not a Tom Brady fan quarterback-wise. <laughs> so, no. I mean, the guy's done tremendous things. I have a lot of friends from New England and – uh you, you can't say a bad word about the guy. Right. But, you know, I think his days are numbered going to Tampa Bay, and I'll probably eat those words. But, I mean, the other day he couldn't figure out what down it was. Yeah. Ah, right, so, right, right, right. Well, he's, so he's, saying... he's got a little Joe Biden in him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not talking politics <laughs> on this. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I the memory uh, thing, I mean, you know. <laughs> One one of my well, keys one of my keys to success is I don't talk politics, sex, religion, or Yankee Red Sox baseball. <laughs> Good rule. I'm well, I'm well done. I'm finished. Uh, I'm just saying, you know. Actually, you're the only one I talk Yankee Red Sox baseball. Yeah, you get that right. With, which is true. It's probably like two people, but anyway. Go ahead, Drew. I'm sorry. I digress. No, so I was saying. So you only can get those right now at the one shop in Chicago. Is that what you're saying? It's not. It's an online. Oh, it's online. Okay. I'm saying you can get it at shops everywhere, but online, the only place that has the Dominican blue is Frontline. There you go. Okay. Frontline Cigars, Stogie Geeks. You if you need the, the URL, email Drew at StogieGeeks.com. He has all the time First in the world. First responder and military site. And for. Yeah. And, and, not, and not for nothing, the, the, you know, Kevin, you bring up a good point, right? Stogie Geeks, right. if you want to smoke the, the new Rockefeller, Email Drew at StoryGeeks.com or Google Frontline Cigars yourself. But if you can't find it, I get it. Especially if you're l listening to this in your car or, or, you know, school bus or wherever, right? Uh, you know, and, and now uh, that is super important, right? Online. I've only been preaching that for, you know, uh, three years here. Well, we're not online everywhere. We're only online with Atlantic Cigars, Frontline, and Federated. Yep. That's it. That's all right. And you got to start. You got to start. No, no, no. And, and they price protect us by 10%, and that's important. Yes. Because brick and mortar is very, very important to me, and especially, let's not use COVID, but especially during this whole downturn with COVID, very, very yeah. important to me. Let's let's talk about that, because th there are some people that, that I, I know in, in the industry, and fortunately for you, you are one of them, right? right. I don't want to be cliche like everyone else and talk about Let Let's talk about the importance of the brick and mortar because i got hell from another cigar vendor for those of you story geeks you can tune into story geeks 341 and 342 
okay? I got hell from another vendor because that comes up, and there's some that are from the camp of, hey, you know, whoever sells it, sells it there, and then there's some from the camp. But, like, please educate the sto- the, the Stogie Geeks listener is very unique when it comes to uh, other podcasting choices, okay? They're very unique. And ever since I've been here, I've always protected the audience. I'm, I make that point across, uh, if not daily, bi- bi-weekly when I speak to Drew and Nelson, right? It's, it's always been important to Paul, but that's w- what we protect, right? Uh, please explain how important that is to you because I really think, because some Story Geek Geeks listeners email either me Nelson or, or or Drew and you know you know you make a big deal about the brick and mortar and you make a big deal but I buy sticks online and whatnot but I, I just want them to kind of get into your head so to me brick and mortar is super super important one because you get an experience in the shop two because what happens is with all these small businesses you have these conglomerates that come up and chew them up and then it becomes a world of conglomerate businesses and you don't want that. You want these mom and pop shops because that's how it started. That's how America started. And you, it's a very, very important because the end of the day, if you don't have brick and mortar, you're going to have four cigar shops of four different companies, and that's it. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have these shops that can push these boutique brands out to their consumers and get more consumers involved. Yeah, Zoom is great, but it's not the same experience as actually being in the shop, putting a cigar in the person's hand and saying, hey, what do you like about the smoke? Right. You know what I mean? And by the way, when you go into a brick and mortar or a Zoom chat and Zoom for brick and mortar, every single person is the same. It's all about the culture of the business. It's all about the people. And every shop I go through around the country is camaraderie. And every shop has its own magic. We just did an event at Taylor Smoke the other day. I met some great folks down there. We were actually able to come out spend some time and it was great just meeting different people tell it smoke the new shop in uh the new shop in concord it, we, we had a we had a great time you know and we did we did an event at apex and it was great being on the road yeah you know what you could sit in your house you could be on the zoom but you do not get the same feeling of in life person yep and if, if and if it's not brick and mortar shops that are out there you're not going to have that. You're going to go to these big conglomerates. You're going to buy them. They're gonna, it's, it's just for me, brick and mortar is important. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you brought up a phenomenal one-liner is that every shop has its own magic. Yeah. Right? Every shop is different. Every shop is a family that is trying to, you know, run a business and do that there. And it's not easy to run a business. It's certainly not easy to run a business and navigate through tobacco, alcohol, or firearms, tax legislation, either whether it be federal or state, right? And it's not easy to compete against a big online giant, right? I mean, I mean, you know, it, it, we as consumers, I think we're, and, and, and COVID's definitely pushing this big calendar agenda forward in my opinion right and i have numbers to actually back it up if we if we ever need to go down there but what what happens is we're being more and more programmed to be to, to have centralized purchasing and 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 that that i'm not just talking exclusively for the premium cigar industry i'm talking about consumer as a whole it's centralized and, and and then because ideally that's what government wants right centralized purchasing and chasing you know f- 10 people for its revenue share as opposed to 400 in a local town or whichever right and it makes shipping and logistics a lot easier and all of that stuff but at the end of the day that brick and mortar needs to really fight for his or her own space within the marketplace Nelson. Yes. I want to go back to cigars for a second. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the Dominican Blue Kevin. So, and because we are Stokey geeks and we, we are geeks, right? I was hoping you could talk a little bit about the filler in the Dominican Blue. It's a Piloto Seco 
Can you talk a little bit about that for those folks that maybe don't understand what that even means and, and how why that's a great that's a great mix, by the way. We just had a stick we talked about last week um, that was a similar um, mix in the filler. So uh, if you could talk a little bit about that, Kevin. Yeah, so it's got Pilota Lajaro, Seiko Lajaro, and Connecticut Broadleaf Lajaro in it. And the percentages are pretty much equal. So the Sumatra binder against the Connecticut Broadleaf might cause a little bit of an issue, but the blender of Victor De La Cruz, again, is a genius. The way he muted it out so it blends perfectly and gets that sweet note is incredible. And when, when you were blending it, did you go through different uh, configurations of that and different percentages yeah. until so you got to where you are? So what happened was we blended it first in a Corojo, and I thought the Corojo was way too strong for the average person. So I have some friends who smoked that Corojo. I've given it out at some events as a limited release, but I thought it was too strong for the average palate. So I thought this Dominican blue was a niche that, yes, it's a Dominican cigar, but it does not taste like a Dominican cigar. And it almost has that sweetness and that flavor of Nicaragua and Honduran, which I enjoy very much, right? So the Corojo was much, much stronger. The Corojo Lajero was actually very strong. Oh, wow. So I wanted to tone it down a little bit when we were first blending the cigar. Great Don't point. Don't get me wrong. I'm bringing that out now, like I said, with the gold band. Because yep. to some yeah. people, they're going to love that Corojo. Yep. Great, great points. What do you do? How do you make that call? Like, how do you make that call? I'm not asking for industry. Like, how does Kevin <laughs> smoke? So from pen? going down like, to like, American uh, Caribbean and Esteli when I first took over the company mm -hmm. and learning the different brands, and I started to compartmentize after a while, keep going down to Nicaragua, I started to compartmentize the flavors in my head, right? So when hmm. I smoke a cigar, I know it's a lapa, right? Yep. I can get that metallic citrusy on my tepe sometimes. I mean, look, I, I, I got a lot more to learn. Sure, I'm aware of that. And when I go to Nicaragua, like I've said on other podcasts, I keep my mouth shut <laughs> and learn. Yep. Because I'm learning new every day. But the way these guys blend it and, and the percentages they know and they just put together, you know, when you first come down there, they have it, they give you a set and you tell them what you want. I don't like to do it that way. I like to actually do it when I get to the factory and sit down with them. Mm-hmm. And so our, Nic our Nicaraguans, we use more of a visa leaf than we do in our Dominicans. Our mm. Dominicans are more Lajero, but it's a toned down Lajero. It's not like, you know, like an LFD, which I love. Mm -hmm. That's going to knock you off your feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Viso. Nelson. Top or bottom of plant. Squiz. The Viso? Yeah. Oh. Like a Viso. Figure it out. Bottom. Cool. Bottom. I don't know. Stoy Geeks, is he right or wrong? The bottom of the Lajero or the top of the Seiko. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. I think it sounds a little nice just saying the top of the Seiko. Yeah, right. It's top of the Seiko. Right. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Have you, you uh, Kevin, have you been able to get down to the factory this year? No. No. So it's actually really funny. When I came back before COVID, when I, by the way, I've been losing my mind, so I had to get on the road finally. And it's one of the <laughs> states, the Carolinas and Virginia, that they didn't have on the list until Tuesday, apparently, but whatever. So I haven't been down in Nicaragua. I'm dying to get back down in Nicaragua. I'm probably going to go after the rains, probably January, as soon as they reopen the factories. The Dominican Republic was hit hard, so I haven't been down there either, which I plan on going to in January. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do like a little tour of the factories. Yeah. yeah, you do a revisit, check up on some stuff, talk about future and potential yeah, plans. Quality control and everything. Quality control absolutely. with I mean, the we opportunity. Shut down. So, American yeah. Caribbean was shut down for a very short time. I don't think we ever shut down, but we were half-staffed for a very short time, and now we're back to full staff. Mm -hmm. um, big topic that's coming up in the industry all wide is inventory. I mean, is that a concern for you, or are you really kind of? Yeah. So, so, so when I was coming back in March, when I when I was coming back, actually, no, I'm sorry. When I was coming back in, from Vegas from TPE, and I saw that everyone was wearing masks, I'm like, something's going on here, right? <laughs> and then as I realized stuff was going on, I immediately called the factory and, and tri tripled the order size. So we had inventory just in case. Mm -hmm. The issue we've been having is with boxes, not really the inventory of the cigars. Cigars have been good. We try to keep strong inventory. Dominican Republic's actually been a little harder than Nicaragua, but not by much. Remember, we talked about this. I know you're going to segue into this, but to me, 
tobacco is like better than money in the bank, right? Mm -hmm. Liquid gold. So in my opinion, you want to hold as much inventory as you can. I think that differentiates us from other boutique brands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can't wait to get into the investment part of, uh, of the interview. <laughs> I'm actually looking at the time because I want to save some time for it or whatever. But Rick is squirming in his chair. He well, has a question. So I got two questions for, Go for you. It. And you, you brought up something that I wasn't thinking of until you mentioned. Um, so the percentage of inventory that's coming in, um, I know that you know it's, it's been tight. Um, it, you, you feel that it's loosening up? You know, I, I feel like it's loosening up a little bit. Yes, it has been very tight, but I still think there are issues with making the boxes. So the question I have to shift a little bit, um, as you know, JoJo and you were talking earlier about the business aspect of this, and um, I look at it from um, a little different perspective because these guys know my background, but when you talk about the brick and mortar and you talk about how it's, uh, you know, no matter what industry you're in, in this country, you know, Brick and mortar, whatever business it is, it's the lifeblood and the backbone of our country. The Don't small, the small businessman are what makes, are what makes things tick. Okay, um, not the big companies because the the big companies are limited, but it's the uh, it's the small brick and mortar. And of course, my question to you is: yes. as you roll out a new brand, uh, reinvent a new brand, as I hear it, I'm learning as I hear, listen to you, um, with what's going on in our country in general and every state is different so you know some states are wide open some states are somewhat closed some states are not so much and we find here in rhode island it's it's still a little limited but are you finding it are you finding it a challenge as you move from state to state and uh, locale to locale um to get this uh to get this up and running and uh and brand your cigar and get it into these shops um because the, the small the small shops are hurting, and Rhode Island especially, you know, with the limited capacity and uh, and what we're seeing. So my question to you is, how much of is it, has it has it been as a you know, challenge for you uh, around the country to get this uh, to get this up and running? So that's why I want to get on the road as much as possible, right? And to get back out there. But you know, there's ways of doing it too, like sending out samples out to people and then having smoking with you on Zoom. So during this whole downturn, social media has been very, very important. You either get it or you don't. Correct. And if you stand forward and you go forward with social media and let people enjoy that experience, they're going to want to smoke your cigar. And a lot of guys don't get that. You know, we're in the 21st century. It's like electric cars, oil companies, right? We're in the 21st century. And by the way, I'm not throwing this out there, but my opinion Oil stocks are so cheap, they're not getting much cheaper. Just saying. Uh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I got to no, write that down. No, wait, 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 because, because I've purchased <laughs> No, I know you wanted to hear that. I know, no, no, wait, wait, wait. wait. Gold He's stocks waiting for that. That's actually, that's actually. And they never got any cheaper, did they, brother? Right, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, like so what you're saying is, is buy cautiously because it's going to be limited, or do you think you should buy because no matter what, like, like they're going to, the government's going to step. We're not going to go all electric cars within the next 10 years. So there is money to be made. You want to buy businesses, not stocks, businesses, mm -hmm. businesses with fortress balance sheets that were able to handle the downturn. Yep. Nice. There you go. Nice. Okay, go ahead. I, I'm I have to tell you, there's going to be attrition, right? <laughs> of course. So a lot of these oil and gas companies, a lot of them bankrupt, a lot of them aren't going to survive. Mm-hmm. But the big ones are going to survive. Talking about big, he was he was just saying the big ones are going to survive, and they're going to swallow up their reserves and their assets. Yep. Right now, you know, you're probably in a range from thirty to sixty-five in oil. Mm -hmm. Probably hit Brent sixty-five at some point. But those stocks have been so depleted and so crushed that if you have patience, you could get some triple baggers in them. Yep. 100%. Yep. I bought. I bought three. Uh, I'll take it offline with you because we don't have enough time to do that. <laughs> I would love to sit here for six hours and talk to you about what what, what, what exactly Remember, I bought. There's always a sector in the market you can put on four trades a year. You don't have to day trade. Mm -hmm. The problem with a lot of people, a lot of these young kids on Robinhood and everything, they're beating the market, they're doing great, fractional shares, whatever it is. I wrote a paper in high school called Wall Street Legal Gambling because at the end of the day, 
the market will win. Mm -hmm. You can stay in as long as you want, but at the end of the day, the market will win. However, with the Buffett philosophy, philosophy or other people's philosophy, if you put on four trades a year, when you have greed up here and fear down here, Eventually, when they get above those points of greed and below those points of fear, they work if you do your homework and you pick the gorilla out of the sector. Yep. And they revert back to the mean, whether it's a trade or it's a long term hold or it gets bought out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when, when I go into a stock, uh, I write it down uh, and then I put a alert on it for when I'm going to sell it. Right. And, so, and some of them are, some of them are, you know, Four, four months out or some of them are, are, are days out right and you know i'm constantly uh going back and forth and and then you know i get an alert and i'm like okay let's do it and then i just you know roll on the mobile app put in a bid and what's super crazy right now is it's amazing how you can buy stocks that are like 18 dollars regular average value and they're like six bucks and you put in like a day bid and say, yeah, I'm gonna go like 489, and sometimes it works. Like some sometimes right. it works, and then it's like, oh crap, oh all right, I bought that for four dollars and eighty nine cents. Uh, they were asking this morning a bit of six dollars and ten cents, and then you just you know then once you get in, I mean you have to stay pretty active on that day when you check your 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 if the slips went. A couple I've gone like that day, and then the next day, you know, a couple of them I put ridiculous bids in to see if I could get it. But you know, it, it's amazing how. It'll fluctuate with that day, and you can put in a lower bid, and and it just might get there. Especially after like that ten o'clock Eastern Standard Time rush, you know, right. everybody's done their overnight trades, and then people tried to get in, and then it's kind of like a little bit of a lull for whatever reason. It just seems to dip quick. It's quick. It's like a you know, it's like an eleven minute dip, maybe. Right? I'm using an average. Right? It just dips and then goes back up to its thing, and then if you can catch it on that dip. You know, it's a difference in only yeah, 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 yeah. 10, 15 years. Well, shares. you got to watch the BWAP, but yeah. Yep. But the thing is, when you buy value of real companies when they're beaten up, mm -hmm. that's the hardest thing to do because people are petrified at that point. And there's blood in the streets, and that's the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know what? Jesse Livermore said it best. The hardest thing to do is sit tight and be right. Right. But if you, <laughs> it is, no matter what it is. Right, right. So, you know, and, and it's amazing how, you know, I'm involved in that, obviously, involved in, in within cybersecurity, involved in premium cigars and, 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 and seeing how the industry flows and stuff like that. And it it's almost like, you know, it, it's probably, which is how your background in business and now you own in vintage kind of like collide, right? Because, you know, when you start a boutique brand uh, there, um or you know a small batch brand or however you want to la la label it right when you start that like you have to make a decision you know do you want to go long do you want to go wide do you want to just do that like you know what i mean like you, you have to make business decisions daily i'm sure some of them right and then there are some you know that are about a quarter out or if you make a decision today on this you're going to feel the benefits three four five months from now and you got different sectors going on within your business and whatnot take us through Less you of gotta stocks. You got to go big or go home, bro. But you got to, <laughs> you can't be halfway pregnant. You really do. You got to go big or go home. Yep. You have to have a vision. Yep. Because if you go into it with scared money, you're not going to make money. You're not going to build it up. Mm -hmm. Me as a cigar smoker for not 26 years, but 36 years, I started when I was 19, my grandfather. You need to change your you website. Know, occasionally more and more <laughs> got into it. But it's you have to have a plan and a vision. Otherwise, you're going to hit a brick wall. And a lot of, a lot of boutique companies, in any industry, whether it's cigars, wine, ribbons, spirits, cars, anything, yeah, yep, yep. go out. 75% of the businesses go out. That's a fact, right? Some crazy number like that. I don't know the exact number, so don't fact check me. Just kidding. But <laughs> some, somewhere in that range, mm. you have to believe in it and you have to have a vision. And you have to look three years into the future. Right. That's a little hard in our industry when we have regulatory, regulatory um, groups always after us. So with, with that information, Kevin, right, how did you, one of the questions I had, and this ties right into what you just said, right? So before you got into Rockefeller, right, how, in, in, in your thinking, how did you get to that, right? Knowing what you just said, 
75 percent whatever it is i'm sure everyone's fact checking right now whatever whatever it is <laughs> right how did you get to the point you I say yeah you know what the 75 guys yeah right how did you get to the point you say you know what the hell with it i'm going to pull the trigger i'm going to buy this sucker so that, i'm still working that's on a great Street. question that's a great and question I, I saw the market changing i saw the commissions going lower changing i wasn't traveling I had a son that was born. I wasn't really traveling out to those crazy places I used to go to, you know, Terra Linda, Chile, and all that crazy shit down in South America with no embassies, which was a crazy time in my life. I, you know, I love cigars and I wanted to give it a shot, right? But before I gave it a shot, I sat down and I got involved with this guy. That was the first mistake because I didn't check the retail stores, but it's okay. I ended up buying him. He actually came to me first and said, I'll buy you out. I said, if that's what you want to do. And then when I realized he, he wasn't going to do that and I bought him out, I sat there and made a game plan be from day one before I moved forward. That's how I, that's how I planned it out. And, w and this is how Rockefeller, the concept of your ownership now was born, correct? Yeah, 100% yep, ownership. Yep. Oh, yeah, I gotcha. Now, were you, did you, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of like irony, right? Because of your background. Your background's gold, metals, stock trading. I mean, you know, you, you, you've been in, 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 involved in that industry for, for decades, right? 30 years, something like that, yeah. Did, did, you, did it ever occur to you that you were purchasing a company called Rockefeller? Or, <laughs> or, or was that intentional? Or where did you ever, so I guess Tupac question, right? Did it ever occur to you like, holy crap, I worked in the stock market in golds and, mm -hmm. and traded gold for a while, was a gold tra trader, you know, I'm uh, in precious metals and I'm gonna about to purchase this company called Rockefeller Cigars, right? And then my second question is, did you ever think about starting from scratch? Yeah, oh, so we question. actually had another company, I wasn't gonna buy Rockefeller, and I was going to use that name for this company. So I asked myself, do I want to turn this company around from the situation it's in? Mm. Or do I want to start this other company? Which I'm not going to say it is because I still have it in case I want to use it. Nice. I don't want to throw that name out there in case we want to make a blend or whatever. You should actually create a second company and have them run against each other. Yeah, it'd be interesting, right? <laughs> because then, because <laughs> then, because the then, place. ideally, you put a corporate umbrella under it and you capture more market share. You create your own market. You yeah. create your own market, yeah. Kevin. You're just, right. Just an idea. Anyway, go that on. was free. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so, so what happened was, I decided that you could put Wall Street and cigars together, right? Mm -hmm. And it, which actually is a cigar we're coming out with soon. That you can blend them together. Wait a minute! It's called, it's called the Wall. It's called the Wall. It's called the Wall Street. No, I'm not gonna tell you what it's called. Hey, uh, <laughs> right, you knew, right, you knew I was digging. You knew I was digging. Go ahead. I have a, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, so it blends them both together because a lot of the Wall Street guys are cigar smokers, at least the ones I grew up with. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So you thought it was a better idea. Yeah. To purchase Rockefeller and change the direction of the company, image of the company, branding of the company, did it there, as opposed to start out on your own. Right. Yep. Gotcha. I did. I thought the name Vintage Rockefeller is a powerful name. Mm hmm Absolutely. I, I, I don't disagree with that at, at all. Um, does anybody know what the potential runner-up name is yet or no? That's never been disclosed? Wait, say that again. The Rock other company. Name? The other company. The the other company that. Have would, you ever revealed that? Have you ever revealed that to anyone within the cigar industry? No. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I respect that. That's cool. Um, We're also going to make some cigars soon. Yep. Based on the other side of Rockefeller, which is the whole Illuminati play. Yeah. T talk hmm. to us about that. In fact, our new five pack that's coming out, that's going to have eventually when it's out there. That's going to have a picture of the Empire State Building, and on the back, it's going to have the all seeing eye in a little section. You know, I'm a Freemason, so this is right up my alley. I'm a Freemason. I'm all too, over brother. this. Oh, all right, brother. <laughs> so, when's that coming out? Pretty soon. That's coming out. We have two more sizes coming out. Yep. Two box presses coming out in a Cameroon and a Sumatra. Mm. Mm. Based uh, on the Gold Series line, we came out with a with a triple wrap. That's been doing unbelievable for us. And we have a new cigar that's coming out that's going to be very limited, only 200 boxes. Okay, cool. 
Cool. It's wow. going to be signed box by a certain artist, and uh, the cigars will be made by Aganosa. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Everybody's going to him. He's going to be busy. <laughs> he's, yeah. a, he's a busy beaver, that Aganosa. Now, we were working on that <laughs> blend for a year already, though. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. then COVID hit, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's super cool. Things happened where we couldn't, you know, it didn't happen right away. I want to try some other stuff. Right, right. I I think collaboration is 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 really good for any industry, uh, as long as both sides can get what they need out of it. Um, right. There, and uh, it seems to be that you know he, he's he agonos is like the flavor. To, to do that there and i Ooh, think tobacco is sensational but you know yeah. all the tobacco a lot of these companies have great tobacco right right now how do you lines with american caribbean in Esteli, and they have tremendous tobacco mm -hmm. and uh and uh jose valdez is a tremendous tremendous blender mm -hmm. yeah love yeah absolutely that's that's super cool that that that's coming down five packs too i there's a lot of that going on around um, and I think that that's going to be a thing and that, and that's really here to stay. I mean, technically you can always get a five pack, right? You go to the shop, but see again, consumers, they like it. They, they, they like it because, because, because you, you make the, you almost make the decision for them. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing or bad thing, but in regards to consumer behavior, that's a program thing that we're used to. Right, yeah. I'm, I mean, Amazon is like a king of that, right? Hey, you bought this. How about this? And you're right. like, shit, why the hell not? It's only one extra click. It's yeah. 20 more give, bucks. Give it Five a shot. Are right. very popular, shot. but e even if you can do it as a sampler, right? Because no one wants to invest initially in a new box. That, hey, I've never tried this shit, mm -hmm. right? I, I'm going to invest $100, $200 into a box. But if I can get a sampler of a brand, that's that's a home run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah right. we want to put each different cigar in that in that sampler so they can try it. Decide which one they like the best. That's the that's the best way. And that's I'm awesome. and, and I'm actually and by the way, Joe. Yes. I'd love to have the data on that to see how many people each one likes of the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well that you gotta set up internally uh, uh internally online, right? Right. But we we can talk off air about that to have you put a promotion together to um if they've purchased it, um, did you package it yet or no? So here's not because of COVID. So okay, because because you could put it out. We send it out to a certain manufacturer. They make the bags. Mm -hmm. Then we take the bags. We send the bags all to Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. Nicaragua packs them with the cigars and ships them back to Miami. Yep, gotcha. Yeah, you could actually, you could actually do something like that internally, um, and. Now, at that point, that's a game changer, right? So, in other words, if they've purchased that Fiverr sampler, they go to this specific URL. Obviously, it's on your uh, it's on your website. Right. They they log in with with an email, and they can rate which one they like. You can either do that. There's so many ways you you can I, do I that. I don't know that anyone's even ever no, done no, that. Uh, uh, no one's going to do it until now. So hold on, okay? <laughs> I gotta sell it first. <laughs> there you go. Right. Gotta sell it first, right? This is why people listen to Stoya Geeks because we we create right. this crap, right? So what'll happen is they'll go to your so URL. Now you're dealing with hard data from Trouble. your consumers, from your consumers, and then at the end of the day, you now have a ton of emails to let them know, hey, we're gonna come up with a new a new blend. Right. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that. We can take that off air. Uh, we can certainly make that happen for you. Like we, we can definitely make that happen for you. Um, uh, and I think experimentally, that's what I'm talking about when I'm here week after week after week. And Drew and Nelson have to hear me say, we need innovation in this industry. We need, we, we need hard data in this industry. And we need yep. freaking people to quit crying because their sticks aren't selling. And put the sticks in the hands that people want, right? Oh. And get data back. You, Sales data isn't enough. Yes, and and you you bring a point for somebody like me. So I'm a I, I was smoking cigars kind of like you. When I was 17 years old, my grandfather was a 
nice. piping a cigar guy, you know, and uh, he's only been smoking for two and, years. And I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Oh boy, that made me feel good. But the oh, fact yeah. of the matter is, I like to say, <laughs> I'm a I'm a promiscuous cigar smoker. So I will try just about anything, and that five pack deal, that type of a thing, appeals to somebody like me because I'll try it, you know, and I'm not putting out, I'm not laying out a lot of cash and, you know, I can sit back and I can enjoy it and try it. But, um, you know, for someone like me and Joe, Joe, Joe will tell you, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's all about, it's all about what you like and what you, you know, you, what your taste is. And, you know, um, I always say this and, you know, I, I'm a big believer in that old saying that, uh, Lou Rothman said, you know, the difference between a $2 cigar and a $10 cigar is $8 and it's all what you like. And, and he said that all the time. And that is so true in the cigar business when people will smoke what they like. And when you put those five packs in somebody's hands um, and you offer that type of a thing where they can try different, different types of cigars, I think that's huge. So, yeah, I think you're on the, you, you guys, Elson, you're right. You're on the right track. Yeah, and, and, and to back up what Rick is saying, and Kevin, you know this, obviously. You, you have enough vision for your company. I get it. But for the story geeks who are just watching or listening, it's a journey through yeah. the Rockefeller portfolio. Yeah. So it's a journey. And then now you're giving them a chance to say, hey, tell me about your, your, your journey. You know what I mean? Which ones you liked, which ones. Because the, the, now it's going to lead to data from, hey, man, people really like the Corojo, right? Like when, when you're telling me, Corojo or Sumatra, so, so, Sumatra, in my mind, I'm going Corojo first. Like, well, it, like you know, for, for, for me personally. You it, know? it does a little more than that too, right? Because so Kevin ends up with, with tons of data, which is fantastic. But me as the consumer, now I might say, you know what? These two sticks, they really align to my palate. Now I'm going to go buy a box of those, right? So it's, it's, it's not just, you know, he collects data. It's a win-win. He wins, the consumer wins, because now I don't have to buy an entire box to explore his right. inventory. I can go through and say, like I said, I got these two sticks. Shit, I'm going to go buy a box of these because I love these. Mm. Yeah. Right. It's the experience, right? Yeah. Yep. So you have an interactive experience with the consumer. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's, that's and it's, key. it's that engagement, I think, that, that Joe talks a lot about, that you know, we, it's getting in the hands and I don't think you just mean physically. It's like something like this. Like it's getting in front of the consumer somehow in an innovative way. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's just the, the industry, if we're, if we're keeping this discussion to the premium cigar industry, okay, it needs an infusion of creativity mm. outside of the stick. And I yep. think, and, and, but, but by the way, these growing pains that the premium cigar industry has, they're not outside of the norm from business, okay? So in other words, you know, if, we, if, you, if, 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 if the five of us started, say the five of us were, were all artists, right? Kevin paints, Drew does clay, Nelson does this, uh, Rick does this, I do this, right? We all have different aspects of that. And then we started like an artist guild, and we knew nothing but to create what we love, right? The business function of the guild could be fledgling, yeah. right? Unless the company is formed together first from people who are at, do aspects of the business. And what I mean by that is let's say Rick is really awesome at um, building uh, wood sculptures, right? But he also has a degree in accounting, okay? and you do the paint or clay. I forgot what I gave you, right? Whatever it is, <laughs> right? But 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 you have aspects in, in this business function. And this one can do my... Unless you have that dual thing. So I think what happened in the industry, getting to my point, is that everyone focused on what they love, producing an awesome creative stick that they forgot. How do I get this in the, the business part? People? If we get the business <laughs> part, and that, now there are some. Now there are some cigar shop owners who had the business acumen first, and then jumped into the cigar industry. See, here's how I look. See, Go ahead. See, here's how I look at it. Right, one you're talking about a think tank, and I agree. But here's how I look at it. 
you can be in 10 shops, you can be in 100 shops, but you figure that out, you're in every shop. And, and, and people, yeah. people don't realize that. They right. don't realize it. It has to be an innovative, in an interactive experience. The other thing is you're going to hit the demographic of millennials. You better know how to hit them. Yes. Because they're the next smokers. Yes. Well, that goes back to your social media discussion, right? Bingo. You see some, a, lot, a lot of brands are doing it, and some aren't doing any of it. Mm -hmm. And definitely, obviously, the ones that are doing it are getting those new millennials and existing customers and maintaining that engagement with them 100%. Right. Right. And in sense of it is marketing, right? You know, yep. like like in the cigar industry, I can't scroll through my social media without seeing fifty pairs of ankles. Like it's ridiculous, right? right. So all I do is like people take a picture of them with their legs crossed or whatever, and they're sitting down and they got their watch. And then I was like, dude, like okay, uh, it, it's cool every once in a while, but there's no there's no substance because if everybody's doing it, then it's watered down. If everyone's just creating you a stick unique. and pumping it out. Then it gets watered down for the actual industry. Drew, you've been quiet over there. Yeah, no, I just uh, I got some listeners on the uh, chat line over here, and they're uh, talking about the Gold Series. You know, back in 2017 when he released that, and so they when he was saying something about re releasing something from Wall Street again, they were they got some good instant chatter really fast. So uh, uh, the, I was asked uh, to ask you, Kevin, uh, Gold Series, you think you'll ever bring that back out again just for uh, kind of a re-release, do you think? So we had a couple of Gold Series remixes, we called them. Oh, the okay. Gold Series remix, we had one that was a San Andreas, and it was aged for about two years. It was a San Andreas, Sumatra, San Andreas, Cameroon. It was a hmm. limited release. Then we did another so, Gold Series remix, was with Connecticut, Habano, and Medoro. Oh, okay. Nice. So you've done a couple of those since then? Yeah, and we re-released the Gold Series because we keep having it in the man for it. Mm -hmm. It's one of our best-selling yeah. cigars. Mm -hmm. And again, the Gold yeah. Series comes from my whole background in gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love it how you tailor the... the. I mean, most cigar shop owners do this in, in some way, shape, or fashion, right? But they really ta tailor it to their to reflect their background. It's very, smoking one now actually is, is very there's very few that that kind of there's not some connection uh yeah. there so yeah that's super cool that's you super know cool. i mean let's not forget the lancero right our lancero is probably one of the best lanceros out there right oh T yeah. sp Again, spend some maybe. time on that because stogie geek listeners do like lanceros but brick and mortars don't really yeah. like yeah. lanceros our fish <laughs> but you know what Back in the day, there were no six by sixties. There were no bigger gauges. They smoked right. Lonsdales. They smoked Churchills. They smoked Pan Panatellas. They smoked Coronas. They smoked yep. Panceros. Right, right. The Cuban small gauge. Yep. So when you go to a brick and mortar, or your 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 sales reps go to a brick and mortar, and they place an order with you, and I'm sure you, knowing you, you're like, how come there's no Lanceros on that order? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, it's like you almost want to say like, well, then that person is not doing his or her job, right? <laughs> but then the cigar shop owner, in defense of the sales rep, the cigar shop owner is saying, Lanceros don't sell. And what I say to every single cigar shop owner is, get off of the chair and sell the freaking Lanceros, because if they're coming into your shop. There's a need for them to have some sort of want of knowledge. If not, they would buy online, right? Right. Some sort of launch of camaraderie. And I've you switched can, six it, by it, sixty guys to Lanceros. Well, excuse me. What was your comment? I have switched six by sixty smokers to Lanceros. Of course. The only thing that creates the problem is they can't get the feeling of the cigar out of their hand. Right. They like holding that bigger yeah. cigar, which I get. I understand that. Well, tell them to grab their freaking thigh and then smoke the other <laughs> hand. You know, tell them, tell them, tell them. Joe Zeppa from Story yeah. Geeks says, uh, "Jesus gave you two hands, okay? <laughs> and if you uh, have two hands, put one hand on your thigh, and the hand you use to write with, or the hand you use to smoke your cigar, hold the cigar in, or vice versa. Because then, because then you would. It's beautiful. Right, right. And 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 I've done that too. Like like shop internally." Like people like, oh, you know, have you tried um, making, um, what was it? The, uh, um, think, oh, the uh, tabernacle, 
right? It was a tabernacle. And, yeah, to, to, from what? F uh, f uh, foundation, right? And they're like, oh, have you tried this? And it's the bigger ring gauge. I'm like, have you tried the Lancero? And they're like, no. And I'm like, it, it, dude, that's where it's at. Like, like and, 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 and that's exactly how my dialogue goes. And sometimes they either find out if I'm full of shit or know my shit. The ones that find out that I know my shit, like, you know, Jojo, I tried the the Lancero. You're right. Like you, like you. I'm like Lancero is where it's at. Like you know what I mean. And 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 that is such. It's like I almost. If I were a cigar rep, I would like do an event, and my events would be Lanceros. Like you know what I mean. Like yeah, get them in the hands. My and, favorite size. I agree with you. Yeah, and and you know I understand yep. if you're golfing or fishing, it's it's whatever you know. With the, but on, sense, yeah. but honestly, uh, you know Connecticut Lanceros can be tough because Connecticut wrap is a little bit more delicate and all that stuff. Really? But I mean, unless you're smoking a freaking cigar, in 15 mile an hour or plus wind. <laughs> it shouldn't. Yeah. It shouldn't be an issue, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be an issue. So, no. so when every single no. brick and mortar tells me that I don't know what it's like because I didn't own a cigar shop, I said, "Oh, I do know what it's like. I used to own a cigar shop in Providence, and you know what we sold? Robusto Lancero or the little freaking the Peters, like the little freaking Corona double Don't. Corona, like you know what I mean? I'm finding, but, I'm finding I'm finding more and more cigar owners though of cigar shops." are excellent you know what i mean like mm -hmm. they really sit there and they know their customer right i mean i was at one the other day called hogshead in fredericksburg who they just fredericksburg virginia who they just took our cigars in and he this this guy bob moore is a great guy and he knew exactly exactly about cigars and i was pretty impressed mm -hmm. he picked up my dominican and knew it was la Hera. i yep. was pretty impressed yep yeah and if you know your customer you're going to know what they want to smoke you're going to teach them about the product and you're going to teach them you know, if they come in first with flavors and then eventually Connecticut and they go up the line. Mm -hmm. So you need somebody to teach them that stuff. So I think it's very important to have the right person in a cigar shop. Right. It, it, the, the right person. Way, in the... You don't get that at non brick and mortar. Going back to his point that brick and mortar is very, very important. Yeah. Yep. But you don't get it in the brick and mortar. But sometimes you don't get it even in the brick and mortar because the brick and mortar cigar shop owner is like, oh, well, I only order. Uh, uh, Toro, Robusto, Gordo. I'm like, right, but I'm starting to see that's not the case. That's awesome. That you're starting, starting to see, see this around not the, the country. That, yep. That's not the case at all. Yep, yep. That's awesome. And 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 it should be a trend that should be leaning that way because there are a lot of boutique cigars that I have that I have purchased on clearance and like what well, you know. Uh, Story geeks, here's a tip: You walk in there with cash to a cigar shop owner and say, "Yeah, I want to buy your Lanceros." You can pay probably three dollars under the retail all day right. long. All day long. <laughs> All day long. So if you want to buy a fiver and it's ten dollars a piece, you can go seven times five and walk in there and you will get that all day long. And the ones you can't are the one that's the cigar shop that you want to be in. The ones that the guys like, you think I'm gonna give you a Lancero here for for thirty percent off? You're crazy. For for a fiver, then you don't gonna do it with a box, because the box is different. The business numbers are different. I get that. But if you start doing that with Lanceros, the one that will not budge down an inch for the Lanceros. The, he's selling the, them. Uh, he's, he, she's selling them. And, and, yeah. and I actually test it. Like, I go into a cigar shop, you know, and like, oh, what do you smoke? I'm like, eh, I don't know. You know, I, 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 especially, like, if they don't know me, I'd just be like, you know, yeah, you know, uh, I smoke this and this. And I'm like, you have any Lanceros? Oh, no, they don't do well. The owner doesn't like them. Like really, <laughs> like okay, you might as well like start writing your resume because in five years you you might not be here. <laughs> by, the, by the way, we got a, a clam bake coming up on um on Sunday. We have a great New England rep. His name is VJ Reddy. He's excellent. He was and, the gentleman uh, I met right a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and yep. we, we're doing a clam bake for Smoke Easy and Stogies, in I think it's Oakville, Connecticut, next to Watertown, and that's a great time, man. If any of you guys are from New England. You should definitely get down there and go to that event. Yeah, so Story Geeks, if you want to get in on, on that it's action. It's not only us. It's about four different vendors. Cool, cool. Story Geeks, nice. if you want to get in on that action, email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com, and I'll put you in touch with Kevin. Uh, cool. All right, let's do another round of questions, and we're going to wrap up the interview. Sounds good. Drew, are we going in alphabetical order, or what's the, what, what's the, uh, what's the rules? Yeah, we'll go in alphabetical order. That'll Hold on, A, first. B, C, D. That's you, Drew. Yep, I'm first. <laughs> All right. 
So, yeah, uh, you know, just to let you know, uh, Kevin, I, I've missed uh, you a couple times here in Texas. I'm here in the Dallas area. Uh, my home lounge is uh, Prestige Cigars and Tobacco Lair in Bedford. Yeah, and, Novi's uh, a great guy, man. I can't wait to see that, him when I get back there. Oh, uh, yeah, our, our remodel and our growth, uh, we've expanded our shop there, and it's, it's come along nicely, so we're hoping to have that ready by the end of the month and uh, have a good grand opening. But, uh, yeah, I met with uh, Brenda, uh, who's one of your uh, social media. Uh, and uh, Brenda's a very close friend and good people. Yeah, and she was just, uh, you know, uh, I that's when I first got introduced to your cigar was through Brenda. And then, um, but yeah, great cigars. Uh, I My favorite is the Maduro blends, uh, for sure. Um, really liking that uh, La Hero, uh that's in the cigars in the Dominican. Uh, but uh, uh, a lot of the women here as well, you know, they're they're really gravitating. They they like your cigar from what I'm being shared with with other uh, cigar uh, shops here in DFW. Uh, that they're really liking your cigar because it's it's you have some mild factors, but then you have some strength factors. But uh, they're able to you know, really uh, dial in or get used to that strength factor and then move into your other mm-hmm. lines in your portfolios. Is that something that, uh, have you heard? I mean, just, just wanted to share that with you. So the women are a tremendous new demographic in the market, right? Mm-hmm. And people who don't look at that are, are, are missing a lot. And and they really know cigars. It's, it's very impressive. In fact, we just hired a girl to handle South, uh, a woman actually, to handle South Texas, Austin, San Antonio, and Houston. And she's worked at various shops, Allison, trainer. Yeah, yep. And she um, she knows tobacco probably better than half the guys out there. Oh, yeah. So women have grown in the smoking industry tremendously as far as CEOs and everything else. And you And you can't deny that, and I would never deny it. Yeah, it's it's definitely a growing growing demographic. We've actually talked about this on the show within the last two episodes, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. We had someone here from a retail shop, and we're talking about your spot on, Kevin. There seems to be this grow that's a growing demographic in the cigar industry, mm-hmm. um, where it, it, and I think you hit it on the head. It's not they're not just smoking; they have the knowledge too to back it up. Tremendous knowledge. Okay, Kevin. I guess A B C D F D H I J. That's me. Okay, um, <laughs> Kevin. St- I got to use the time for stocks. Okay, all right. I bought a stock. Uh, it is called uh, the uh, Devon Energy Corp. It's trade on the the New York uh, Stock Exchange yeah, no ticker city uh, ticker symbol D V N. I bought it at four sixty two. It's now chilling at a cool nine oh seven. What do you think? Let it ride to 12. It's it's high. I mean, the P ratio is uh, slow, very under 10. <laughs> so, <laughs> right? The P ratio. So, 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 real quick, this is, this, is, this is a cigar show. Yep. There are some oil companies out there. Take Schlumberger. The earnings were out today. Mm-hmm. They were they were not in line. They beat the bottom line, but they didn't uh, they didn't beat on the revenue on the top line. Mm-hmm. They pulled out of fracking in the U.S. They got hurt when oil went down to 38, that negative 38, which was an unbelievable day. But they're investment grade paper. So on bad earnings, you would look to buy a company like that because they're not going away. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Schlumberger was $90 before COVID or mm-hmm. $80 before COVID. Right. Mm. Now $15. Right, 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 right. These, you, know, you know, maybe you get a little tax selling. Devon Energy has done very well, mm-hmm. whereas Apache hasn't done very well because the more debt these companies have, the more they're in trouble. Now, I don't know the balance sheet of Devon Energy. I don't know how much debt they occurred mm-hmm. or what they have, but Devon Country is a very good co- um, company. It's up, what, four points from where you bought it? Look, yep. Bulls and bears make money. Pigs get led to slaughterhouses. Yep. 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 I um, haven't seen the balance sheet, so... So let me just ask you this question. Do you personally cross-reference if it's trading X amount of whatever your threshold is? doesn't matter, right? Everyone has their own threshold. Do you monitor what it's trading against that specific market? So would you measure that off of the S&P or would you measure that over the NASDAQ or like what? I would measure it off of the sector it's in. 
and how it's trading against the other stocks. You could always okay. hedge it with options. You could hedge it against yep. something else. Yep. Like you could buy an oil stock now and hedge it with an electric car stock, right? Sure. We were buying yeah. Neo the other day at 21 and a half. I was I looking at that this morning, and and I'm going to ping Johnny and ask him for more time because I was looking at Neo this morning, and I'm like, God. Uh, and and it, I was looking at that last week, and it went up like like 11 points. So, right. So Neo reminds me of Tesla, right? $28, yep. everybody was shorting it, yep. and Tesla went berserk. Right. So, and I get not buying Chinese companies like what happened with Lufkin Coffee, which was like the Starbucks of China, mm -hmm. and there's accounting issues. And yeah, that could happen, but. Neo at 21 and a half gets an upgrade from JP Morgan that's worth $40 a share. Now you got a tremendous amount of shorts. If people don't know what shorts are, you're selling stock against stock you don't have, hoping the stock comes down. Mm -hmm. Yep. So on pullbacks, Neo looks interesting. Absolutely. And if you were long an oil stock, now you're hedged. So Neo, to me, like Neo is like the Chinese Tesla, right? That's a, for those of you story Correct. geeks, right? And don't worry, we're going to talk about two more minutes of this, so it'll be back hey, to no, Scott. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not going to recommend stocks from here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying, no, I'm saying. So but it's the Chinese is Tesla. You hedge your positions. You right. don't get crushed if you're wrong. But in my mind, like Joe Hozempa's mind, right? I'm like, yeah. that's, that's a $40 stock next year all day long. You're probably right. Like, it could be like, higher. Like, yeah, right, right, right. Do you the get shorts are caught? The stock was three dollars. The shorts are caught. Yep, yep. Do they you know they're screwed? Do you get component specific? Like, for example, okay, these are the batteries that are in these cars. So no, I don't get that. Component okay, specific. okay, yeah, because I because I went down that rabbit hole trading wise, and I got a couple that I've I've bought. Right, and and I'll spare you the details and the story geeks details. But I was like, oh wow, well if these are in Tesla cars. And he makes more, and I'm like, eh, I don't know. And, and to me, like when you hold them for 60 days, they're kind of flat. Right. You know so I mean? the whole supply issue, the supply issue thing became big when Apple was involved, right? Because who supplied Apple? Right. What semiconductors were in Apple, and everyone looked at this. There was a thing on Bloomberg where you could look at all the supply chains. But you're right; they usually end up flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta like really day trade those and then do that there. So okay, that's good advice. That's good advice. Okay, I've used my round table time. Sorry, I didn't talk about cigars, Kevin. You appeared on Story Geeks, but I have backup. It's all good. All right. <laughs> okay, so uh, Nelson. All right. I'm going to bring it back to cigars. Okay, thank you. And I'm sure that the uh, Story Geeks, thank you. <laughs> and, and actually, this is triggered by a conversation we were just having. So without naming names, obviously, right? Kevin, I'm, I'm sure either the first time you went in or into a shop where you're already there, but maybe you're visiting, right, because you visit with the reps sometimes. Um, has there been a time where you went in there and you were like, this guy doesn't even know what, what he's talking about? Like, have you been disappointed by retail? Because I, I agree with Kevin, right? And, and I'm not backing you in a corner because you're not naming names, but has it happened that you left there kind of questioning, like, this guy sells cigars? <laughs> oh, boy. Has that happened? I love it, dude. It didn't take no, you that's long. That's a great question. That's a and, great question. Uh, I, I have to say maybe only 10%. That's it, 5%. So it's happened, though. Which I was, which I told you I'm pretty impressed about. Yeah, it's and By the way, though. I've yeah. told store owners that, that too. You know, I've said, listen, you have a whole new world with boutiques out there, and you need to get them in people's hands. Yep, yep. And if you don't want to, we should do on. it together. But, you know, you got to make it together, right? It's like a team. So we do it together. Yep. yep. And right. then it works. Yeah, I think a lot... To back that up, Nelson, uh, first of all, the, the great quote, <laughs> boy, am I rubbing off on you, <laughs> right? I, Story Geeks, I apologize for rubbing <laughs> off on you. No, I think that's great, right? It's a great question. And I, I think where some of the brick and mortar retailers, like, they think that bringing in the cigar stops the sale cycle. Right. Like, right. oh, oh, I supplied this for my customer base in my brick and mortar shop and just a limited offline i speak to drew like every other day on my way into work because i have a 45 minute commute to when i'm here in the studio and he's an hour behind so he's eating breakfast and i'm driving into work and you know and and drew tells me what they get new in the shop and what they don't and i'm like yep those are selling, those are staying. Those are selling, those are staying. Those are selling, those, like Drew, yeah. right? And, and and it's amazing oh, yeah. because when Drew, 60, 80 days, 90 days, Drew's like, you know, we brought in that cigar brand, and you are like, right, like the freaking, like the consumers don't like, like how to, and, and, and Drew asked me the same question you asked me off air. Like, Joe, how do you know? 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like for you story geeks that are just listening, right, and not watching, like, there are a lot of times offline where, the, like, either the brick and mortar shops customers, if I'm close to them, or their, their, you know, the brick and mortar shop owner themselves, or you guys, Drew, I'm speaking for Drew and Nelson yeah. here, where you guys ask me, like, how do you know? And I'm just saying because it's like everything else. It has nothing to do with the premium cigar industry. There's a story behind every product. And it's up for the company to sell the story. Not sell it like, you know, old-fashioned salesman or saleswoman or anything like that. Right. But, but have them want to be part of the experience, right? Like, people are buying freaking Teslas. It's not because they freaking give a crap about the freaking emissions coming from their muffler. It's an experience. No, it's, it's, an ex it's an experience. It's an yeah. experience that is turning into a cult. Okay, got, and by and by the way, Tesla truck order. No, right, and by the way, cult like consumerism is nothing new. It happens with alcohol. It happens with firearms. There are some guys that are like, "I'm a Glock guy. I'm a this guy. I'm a this guy." Is right? It? I fight a Glock. Right? With the pl a real true Glock plastic piece, it ain't an accurate freaking gun. Nope. You can go back to Edward Bernays in 1929. You can go back to Edward Bernays in 1929, 1930. I wasn't there, Rick. You remember that? No, I'm only, I'm only, uh, I'm only, I'm, only I'm almost, I'm almost there, Joe. Joe. You know, I'm, I'm almost, almost there, brother. I'm only messing with you. No, but Joe's right, and I think Kevin hit on that earlier, right? I think Kevin, you actually used the word experience, right? That just, yeah, we talk, I feel like we talk about experience. this all the time. It's to me, it's a no-brainer. You, if you own a brand and you're a retailer, you just said it, Kevin. It's a team effort. You have yep. to work together to sell that. Yep. You can't just put it on the shelf and just let people walk in and mm -hmm. browse around. You're not buying a shirt. Right. right. You're buying right. an experience. Yeah. But even if you right. are buying a shirt at Target, right? I'll use something mainstream, right? If you are mm -hmm. buying a shirt at Target, there's some people who are like, okay, I got to buy this shirt because I have a baptism this Saturday. But there's like some people like shit, man. I heard about this shirt and I want to get this shirt at Target. Like right. you know what I mean? Or or hire boutique or uh, or hire store or whichever they want to do. But it's experience, and that is what's missing. That is what. And, and, and we, Drew and Nelson and myself, and former Stogie Geeks. Um, I was gonna say ambassadors. Boy, who's on my mind? Host, <laughs> host, <laughs> host. Uh, 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 you know, the the it, we go there. And we interview people, but it's the experience. And when I'm talking to someone, I can tell if they've had an experience of purchasing their cigars or not. And to answer Drew and Nelson's questions that happen off air, if they're not creating that experience or if they're forcing that in experience, there are some businesses that force an experience in any industry. Kevin will tell you, right? If they force an experience. You have to let it organically happen. Yep. And, and you have to be there for your customers. And I think that that trickles down to the brick and mortar to if they make a decision to purchase Rockefeller cigars and three other boutiques at the same time, it's up for them to differentiate on why their consumer needs to experience all these new boutiques we brought into the shop, yep. not just this one. And it happens all the time when certain brands get star power. For example, we have Mi Caritas from Steve Saka. And we all know Steve Saka from Creative League and blah, blah, blah. And, and when we get that, and he's a great guy, super guy, and I'm not, and I'm not going poo-poo on anybody, but it's like, if you came in, Kevin, at the same time as the Sobre Mesa line came in, they go for the easier route. And it's up for the brick and mortar to educate their consumers and employees to give them experience on the total humidor not just stick specific yep that okay makes sense. okay all righty we have rick so to go to give well i want to give a plug a little bit i guess to the to the local cigar industry here in rhode island and one of the things that um one of the questions i asked jojo before we actually got on was you know a little bit about your brand and i wanted to try one of your cigars and you know, Havana didn't have them. They ran they're out. out. Yep. They're out. And so, two-part question. Um, one, I would like to give a plug to the to the 
brick and mortars that are carrying your cigars locally. And um, second of all, you know, we have a friend who's got a brick and mortar and uh, they're getting ready to, to launch a new place. And where I'm from, I'm from Middletown. Now, Middletown, if you know Rhode Island, you know that Middletown's on an island and we're right in smack in the middle of New well, Newport's on one side of us, Portsmouth's on the other side of us. The place that he's opening is going to be the only brick and mortar on the island. The only oh, wow. place. Yeah. So you know where I'm going with this. Yes. <laughs> this is, this is uh, virgin country for that. But there are a lot of cigar smokers, and they don't like to leave the island. So there's a natural clientele there. But the clientele that, that they're going to be dealing with is not the same as the brick and mortar that uh, we go to all the time. Okay. And I think my, myself... And JoJo, we're going to work on this, is to get your line in the new place. Thank you. So oh, we yeah. can push it. I mean, and we'll push it. I will. I oh, know yeah. JoJo we, will. We need to, but, yeah. But we, yeah. Need to, we need to get their ear, and we need to get, maybe get you down here and, uh, and, and, and work that. But the fact of the matter is, it's going to be the only one. And it's prime virgin territory and more importantly kevin where that's going to be geographically located you're going to have a lot of upstate new yorkers traveling to the next town over which is newport you will and there and i think that you're going to be able to capture a little bit more of that brand recognition you're going to you're going to capture that and the other thing is because the locals don't like to leave the island they don't like to come to providence they don't like to they don't like to drive they don't like to go over the bridges and the fact of the matter is is that it's a solid based local clientele it's going to be that. Yeah. And the location is perfect. Um, so, and they're looking at launching uh, the way things are going right now, probably mid November. Cool. Um, so now Rhode Island will have 40, no, 39 shops. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know if Rhode <laughs> Island's back on the do not go list. It's crazy. It keeps changing every day. It does day. keep was, changing. Uh, well, it, it changes. Yeah. It changes. But uh, I think, I think they're going to stay on an even keel right now. Um, you know, the governor. I'm not always a big fan of, but the fact of the matter is, is that um, they realize that um, no matter what business you're in, particularly yeah. to the hospitality industry or something like the cigar industry, um, you know, uh, they don't want to hurt the small business any more than they already have. So I think, if anything, we're on an even keel and we're going to stay there. But the fact of the matter is, is that um, when you look at what, what I'm talking about and Nelson and and Joe, uh, absolutely know where I'm going. Um, I'd love to. I, I'd love to meet you. And um, yeah, let's have a smoke, brother. Get, I'll come up there in a couple of weeks. Yeah, come on, yeah. come on up because uh, come on down, whatever which way you're going. Uh, <laughs> he's coming. He's coming up. He's you're coming, coming up. up. You're coming up. He's coming up. But Kevin, so what I'll do love, is, I'd love to get you get you over here. Yeah, what I'll do is, Kevin, text me offline when we okay. you plan on coming into town, and we'll pick a shop and we can meet. And do that there. All right, so, sounds great, brother. Awesome, awesome. Well, Kevin, um, you didn't, I would. You didn't answer my. You didn't answer my other question. Well, let's give a plug to the uh, to the other cigar shops that are carrying your line here, uh, locally. Well, White Ash has it. Vintage yep. has it. And by the way, what Royce did with that hotel in Westerly is just unbelievable. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. you had so many New Yorkers. It was, it's just unbelievable. Well, that was, that was from a small cap hedge fund. I mean, amazing. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's economic development, you know. And, you know, uh, Westerly has, like, the B-plus students that are working in politics. <laughs> yep. And the rest of Rhode Island, like, you know, not for nothing, like, Rhode Island is a super cool place, right? We have the, all four seasons. They're equally potted. A lot of super cool things there. And, like, I wish that I could have like 20 minutes on the Senate and House floor <laughs> and Me just too. say, like, listen, like, you guys, like, got a wonderful thing here and, like, you got to super do it. But this is not a politics show. I would love to, I would love to do a politics show, quite frankly, um, <laughs> there. And maybe we can. Uh, 2021. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, like BJ, we're now in a bunch of stores in Connecticut. I mean, yep. a, a really nice one. We're in a Savannah 25, which is great. Speaking of 2021, that. Kevin, before we go, what yeah. do you got coming up for 2021? He already told you. He's doing five packs. Well, Just yeah, a, yeah, no well, new lines? Not only five packs. <laughs> that cigar we're coming out with was only 200 boxes. We've already sold out of 50 boxes. 
That's the so Wall Street themed one. It's not even gonna be ready till the end of November. Yep. The one with Aganosa. Then we have um then we have a a Cameroon coming out oh. and a and a, a Sumatra coming out. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So which, Kevin's which, busy. Which is gonna be beautiful. I'm busy. So Kevin, last I spoke to you, right quick before you leave, uh you told me that JetBlue was not a good buy. It's still hanging. Are you still? Uh, <laughs> you think you guys dump it? What do you think? Do you think? <laughs> so there's a, there's a company. Last one. Yep. There's a company called Valeris. B L R S. It's up from three to eight bucks. Yep. Mexico Airlines are a lot different than us, right? Mm -hmm. Now that Air Mexico is 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 uh has been crushed because they're bankrupt. Valeris is going to pick up all that traffic. Mm. So if you have patience, again, sit tight and be right. Valeris is probably a great stock. Mm. The okay. South American airlines are a lot different than the domestic airlines. They can fire and rehire back. Yeah. I I have I know a... it's more risky, but the guys who run it, again, everything starts with the CEO down. Yeah. So the guy, guys who run it are very, very smart people. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So long term, I think that's a winner, especially now. And by the way, they've kept 75% to 80% capacity during COVID. Mm -hmm. wow. That's unheard of. We're yeah. at thirty percent. Right. I mean, I think at the bottom we were at seventy-seven thousand flyers with TSA before COVID. We were at two million two hundred thousand per right. day. Right. Yeah. So right. Now I think the latest count was ninety-five or a million. I'm not sure. Right. But you take a company like American, which I got hurt in because I had it during COVID. I got hurt in American. Right. Oh yeah. We won't talk about that, but it happens. So American has the youngest fleet. Will they survive? I don't know. They have a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. Delta has the oldest fleet. Delta, they have to change their fleet. United has to change their fleet. So if American can somehow figure it out with the youngest fleet, paying for headquarters, great run airline. Right now, it's really good. Parker's turning it around. They just got all this debt because of COVID. Right, right. Kevin, I have a phenomenal corporate attorney. If you yeah. ever wanted to do a stock podcast that people have to sign up for and pay a subscription, you let <laughs> you let me know. All right, that'd, be cool. <laughs> that'd be a great cool. side pod. Uh, you know, and when they sign up, they sign up to only watch only, so it won't be on all the podcast catchers. They sign up only. That's the workaround, and they get, and we just talk freaking. You know, we're gonna do a cigar stock podcast. That'd be fun, dude. That would be <laughs> that would be epic. Like 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 if if that's if you have bandwidth for that. Um, I don't, but I'll make it. <laughs> uh, I I think that'd be super cool, like super yeah. cool to do. Anyway, just hey, if you want in, uh, it'd be there. If not, you can join our little stock club on Slack. I'll give you the details. We have a <laughs> sounds good. Hey, uh, hey Joe, I got one more thing for uh, Kevin. Before okay, we... all right, one more. La la last one. Go for it. All right, all right, Kevin. So, does the summer of '69 do anything for you, Brian Adams? Oh yeah. Got my first real six string. Yeah, great song, man. I used to play guitar too. Why? What yeah. are you talking to some people over there? I had long hair. I'm not taking out the pictures. I had long hair and I played electric oh, guitar oh, as a kid. Oh, nice. Yes. There you go. Yes. Magic, so. There's a backstory oh, yeah. here. Yep. Oh yeah, there's a backstory. That's for another time. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> on on yeah. on the next podcast, we'll, we'll begin with summer of '69. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Kevin, thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks. Thank I, you. Always fun, brother. I wish you luck as you uh, navigate through all of these crazy waters and legislation. And I'm looking forward to your projects that are coming out. And uh, thank you very much for appearing on Story Geeks. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come back, we're going to have some cigar news and what we've been smoking. We'll be right back. <laughs> 